Some interesting things are developing in the world of the Nintendo Switch Pro, Next Gen Switch, Switch 2, whatever it's called, the supposedly 2021 Nintendo Switch device, which at this point there has been so much smoke, there has to be fire, everything is pointing to 2021, some sources are even saying early 2021, and it might sound crazy to some people to talk about this in the midst of Nintendo having its best sales year ever for a Nintendo Switch, but Shintura Furukawa himself kind of sort of talked about the next Switch device, saying they are working on cutting edge technology and something that can get about five to six hours of battery life. And you don't work on cutting edge technology and not start to get into talks about actual cutting edge technology. And now we have a new leak coming out of, well, out of Taiwan. Now, it's important when we talk about this because Nintendo does have factories in Taiwan. They are the ones that actually make Nintendo Switches for the North America region. They split it off from China. They were trying to, uh, you know, kind of circumvent some of the new tax laws that were going in place in the United States against China imports and goods by, you know, taking the parts that, that, that are manufactured in China and basically assembling them over in Taiwan for North America. Well, what's interesting here is the talk about uh, the screen technology, because one of the early leaks that we had way back on the Wall Street Journal some two years ago was about how there was going to be new screen technology. And there's even a company Nintendo has partnered with uh, that, that that is in the screen technology space, although their screens have yet to appear in a Nintendo Switch or Switch Lite device. But now we have an idea of the direction Nintendo might be going with new screen technology. And this comes from Economic Daily News, which is a Taiwanese news outlet that is very accurate when it comes to leaking of products not so accurate when it comes to leaking of release dates so if they had a release date in this article you can basically ignore it uh but they are you know very accurate when it comes to leaking things from the manufacturing side in terms of what's actually going on uh, they have a long-ranging history of this on taiwanese made electronic devices all right so what is happening here uh is that the console is apparently going to get a mini led display from Inolux. Uh, that's the company that Nintendo is going to partner with to get this mini LED display out. Uh, right now, they currently they currently work with Sharp and JDI. Uh, but I'm I, th this is interesting. Mini LED technology is extremely interesting because some people have said, oh, they should go straight to OLED and all this jazz. Uh, but let's talk about what mini LED actually is. Uh, so... A mini LED has nothing to do with the size of the screen. You can have mini, LED, mini LEDs in 75-inch TVs, let alone in smaller screen displays. Uh, but if you're unfamiliar with the technology, uh, it's uh, basically a, a main screen for the console that would have mini LED technology is using that in a, as opposed to the traditional 720p LCD screen. So it's like a hybrid of current backlit LCD screens, uh, but it has an OLED style local illumination and dimming. So each pixel in an OLED screen emits its own light and can be turned on and off individually. That's what makes OLED so great. Uh, but LCD screens rely on illumination from backlights, which can result in light spill in dark areas of the screen that appear gray rather than black. Uh, this is you know, why OLEDs have been considered king for a long time. However, in contrary to traditional LCD backlights, many LED screens provide much more local feel of backlighting to illuminate the pixels on the screen more precisely. This improves screen contrast and potentially battery life uh, because there's less waste or light spill as the light is only delivered to pixels that need it. Uh, Apple is actually going to be adopting this technology in future devices uh, coming out in 2021 and beyond. Right now they do use uh, OLED, but they're going to be switching from OLED to this because it's cheaper without hardly any loss in quality. Now, OLED is still the key of display technologies but obviously OLED has a really big caveat to it and that is screen burn-in it's real it's a thing there are reduction uh, things uh, ha happening software wise to try to uh, prevent it from happening but it's still an issue with OLEDs uh, but this isn't an issue with LCD and it's not an issue with micro LED either so micro LED 
just to explain it one more time, and maybe even more layman terms, is basically the same technology being used in LCD, except LCD relies on you know either getting its light from the sides or getting its light from a big source in the middle and pushing out. Then what this does is it creates more light sources. So it puts little LEDs all around the screen, allowing uh, them to control each section of the TV, however many LEDs are in each section of that TV, uh, efficiently and power efficiently as well. Because uh, when you're using an LCD, the whole screen is lit up at once, whether the screen is black or not. This is often why even when you turn off the lights, if your TV is in some sort of sleep mode but is still on you could tell the screen is on even with the lights are off because it doesn't look black it looks gray uh, so you're still using energy in those sleep modes whereas that's not the case uh, with you know with with mini LEDs mini LEDs uh, most people when they see a mini LED display next to an OLED display have a very hard time telling the difference uh, and yeah it helps with HDR support and all that as well and supposedly mini LED tech uh, is uh, a kind of, kind of a uh, emerging technology, but it's, it's it's rather cheap to make. To be honest, it, it's not that cost expensive. It does not. It, it is more expensive than than traditional LCD, but we're talking pennies on the dollar. More expensive. It's not that expensive of a tech. It's not like going to OLED, which is much more expensive, or micro LED, which is just you know an even better OLED technology, but also a lot more expensive so obviously uh this is going to lead to obviously better contrast on future switches um you know better blacks deeper blacks you're going to see uh better you know potential hdr support and yeah obviously this could lead to better resolutions and all that um as well that looks crisper and cleaner and this would honestly be needed if nintendo was ever planning to do um any sort of 4k upscaling if they were going to use an upscaler of any type uh whether it's dlss 2.0 or, or however nintendo would handle that uh it's important of course to have the screen technology in place that doesn't make it look like it's such a drastic difference looking on your switch to looking on your 4k tv obviously you don't want to be looking at a really low quality screen and then looking at your 4k tv which all of a sudden looks like the system is almost a completely different system because of the color differences so this will help uh, alleviate a lot of that in fact a lot of tvs that we get today feature uh, mini led for the lcd technology uh, or they, they go to oled a lot of the lcd traditional lcd uh, is starting to kind of fade out even in the tv space uh, outside of the cheapest of the cheap tvs of course which are just going to give you whatever they can get from the factories for next to nothing but yeah i'm this is obviously exciting news uh, because it's another Nintendo Switch Pro leak slash rumor slash whatever you would like to call this coming out of the manufacturing space. And it's, it's just, we are entering a period where I feel like all three platform holders are going to be launching new technology in the next six months. After all, we're like, what, a week and a half, two weeks away from the, uh, you know, Xbox Series X and S launching, you know, another couple days after that for the PlayStation 5. And then if you think we could be three or four months away from the Switch Pro or whatever they call it, the new Nintendo Switch, the Switch 2, uh, it's possible even that it might be almost indistinguishable what a next-gen Switch would look like versus this because you're not going to include this technology which creates all these better image quality features if you're not also going to include the technology inside the system to take advantage of those image quality features like if you're still going to have games running at 360p and being super blurry in handheld mode what's the point of a better quality screen if you're going to have a better more high quality screen you're obviously going to have the components inside to actually take advantage of that which means we should get more d more ram and like Faster RAM speeds, faster bus speeds, faster CPU speeds, you know, you know, more VRAM. Like, there's going to be clear advantages in this system. And having a more powerful screen that is a little bit more power efficient is a big deal. It leads to better battery life. And, yeah, believe it or not, it's kind of crazy how we could actually get an, a power increase while reducing power consumption, like a power increase in terms of performance, but re reduce power consumption because we're just so much better at manufacturing chips at smaller nanometers and all that today uh, than we were back in 2015. Um, this isn't always the case. If you want the most power, power, you need a beefy power supply like in a 
you know, you want a 3090 for your uh, computer, you're going to need a pretty beefy power supply. But we're not talking about computers. We're talking about mobile here. And I think that Nintendo is positioned extremely well with the Switch Pro uh, to take advantage of the momentum of Switch and just keep it going in the midst of these new console launches when they finally start to get in stock at some point next year and it's easy for everyone to pick up. So, yeah, that's just me. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. I am uh, going to be uh, getting this platform whenever it comes. Uh, Nintendo has already essentially confirmed it exists, so now it's just a waiting game on when Nintendo thinks the best time is to release it. Obviously, releasing it after the hype cycle has maybe faded from the new gen platforms might be a good idea. You get clear of the holidays, get your Switch sales out of the way, then announce it next year uh, and, and go from there. Anyways, I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you so much for tuning in, and I will catch you in the next video.